this is our opportunity in our own land, in our own territory, to take a stand against the tar sands industry and to take a stand uh, for our land and for our future generations. People have power to stop it. And I think the more knowledge that everyone has, that the more of us that can we can stand together. There hasn't been consent from communities, there hasn't been consent from the general public around this. Governments and industry need to be held accountable for what they're for the projects that they're trying to push on the public. Line 9 was built in 1975 to transport imported oil from Montreal to refineries in Sarnia. Enbridge is now applied to Canada's National Energy Board to reverse its direction of flow so that it can transport oil from Sarnia to Montreal. Enbridge has applied to transport heavy oil, a category that includes tar sands. The tar sands are a mixture of sand, clay, and a tar-like substance called heavy crude oil, or bitumen. So the Line 9 reversal is proposed by Enbridge. Um, is about opening up markets for Alberta in southern Ontario, southern Quebec, the northeastern United States, potentially Europe, um, and all along the the, uh, the Atlantic coast. Line 9 obviously is, is important because it, it's, it's another route for, for tar sand uh, bitumen to, to uh, spread across the country. The industry right now, they have planned over the next five years to spend $40 billion and build 14,000 kilometers of new pipelines in North America to take this bitumen around the world. And if they are successful in doing this, they'll add another 3 million barrels a day of bitumen being uh, uh, produced in the tar sands. And this is what we're fighting here. The pipeline passes through cities, watersheds, rivers, and farmland. 9.1 million people live within 50 kilometers of Line 9. 115 communities in total, including 18 First Nations, and big cities like Hamilton, North York, and Kingston. Enbridge has a very poor record of environmental impact. Between 1999 and 2008, Enbridge listed 610 spills that released approximately 21 million liters of hydrocarbons into the surrounding area. But Enbridge is most known for their 3.8 million liter spill in Kalamazoo, Michigan in 2010, amounting to the largest inland oil spill in U.S. history. Beyond the threat that Line 9 poses to the areas that surround it, the pipeline is also necessary for the expansion of the most destructive project on the planet. The, some people say that the tar sands is just situated, it's just a problem for Alberta. But what we see that's happening now is it's becoming this huge industrial complex with the pipelines that are expanding and transporting this tar sands oil. There's pipelines that are going out west through BC, pipelines going down south through the US, and now what we see is pipelines coming um, through this area, through our territory at Six Nations, through Ontario. The pipelines are the bloodlines, they're the arteries of the, the tar sands and if we don't, if we're not able to stop the arteries, we're not able to stop the dramatic increase in, in, in the tar sands and it's very important to remember that it is the pipeline companies, the oil companies that are then driving policy in Canada. We just give it over to them because once those pipelines are built, there becomes this terrible automatic uh, imperative to keep them filled at all times. The Tar Sands Giga Project has already resulted in decertification of an area the size of the United Kingdom in North America. The current plan is to increase the production tenfold. In order to produce one barrel of oil from Alberta Tar Sands, it requires up to 350 gallons of Canadian fresh water. The wastewater from the process is emptied and stored in huge toxic tailings ponds that can be seen from space. Since the toxic waste from the tar sands has been flowing into the river and seeping into the groundwater, rare and virulent cancers have affected many of the indigenous community members. Fish and game have been found with physical abnormalities, 
deformations and tumors. When we look to the tar sands and the cancer rates in communities like Fort Chippewan, where you have over a hundred people that have died from cancer and other autoimmune deficiencies in just 10 years, and this is a community of 1,200. This isn't only detrimental to the health and livelihoods of these communities, but it also violates the nation's treaty rights, which guarantee the right to hunt and fish, as well as the right to meaningful consultation. It's been going on consistently. It's the lack of consultation and accommodation from the Crown, from the province, from developers, from everywhere. Uh, there is consistent development going on in our territory without any concern towards us, without any concerns through your own Supreme Court decisions that state that they need to consult and accommodate. That we have these rights and um, that they have these treaties that they have signed um, and agreed to with our people and yet they're ignoring it and ignoring it and ignoring it. Line 9 passes within 50 kilometers of 18 native communities in Ontario and Quebec. However, Enbridge has evaded meaningful consultation with these communities. This is a native rights issue, an environmental issue, a human issue, and a planet issue. This is the big picture of the pipeline. We're identified through our relationship to the land, our ceremonies, our identity, our language, all of that is connected to the land. British Columbia and other parts of Canada are like living, breathing organisms. So you have your Red River, you have all these different rivers here. One spill will be the Kalamazoo. And Enbridge just got charged, for example, by the U.S. government for not cleaning up the Kalamazoo. They, they, they hid it. They basically took and, and put stuff over top of the oil to try and hide it, and the U.S. government has gone in there and found it. So if people need to know that that's what Line 9 is, uh, is going, that's what it's going to mean to them, they will be under imminent danger of a fracture in that pipe. This is not a new pipeline. This is not a pipeline that has been designed for this bitumen that comes out of Alberta. This is an existing pipeline that is, that is being reversed to take the dirtiest substance known to man. A huge slick, about 877,000 gallons of oil have spilled out into the creek here near the Kalamazoo River, the Tamaridge Creek, which spills into the Kalamazoo River. We're got, getting reports now that there is oil down in the area of Battle Creek by a boat. In July 2010, a ruptured pipeline spilled an estimated 3.8 million liters of crude oil into the Talmadge Creek which feeds the Kalamazoo River in southwest Michigan. The diluted bitumen in the pipeline separated into a toxic gas and heavy oil that sank into the affected waterways. The Calhoun County Health Department continuing to monitor air quality and has not lifted the suggested evacuation area where levels of the poisonous gas benzene have reached unsafe levels. Residents up to 50 kilometers away from the spill reported smelling chemicals. Meanwhile, to this day, residents are still sick from the aftermath of the spill, and tragically, many have died since. Most troubling for Ontario residents is that the pipeline ruptured in Kalamazoo is almost identical to Line 9. It is part of the same pipeline network. It uses the same interior lining, and it's almost the same age. It, it's obvious that our federal government really doesn't seem to care too much about, uh, about its uh, conduct and the damage to its reputation. I mean, we have what I would say is a very radical federal government that says, despite this obvious, um, you know, the obvious impacts, despite what scientists have been telling us for 20 years, we're just going to ignore that. I, I mean, that's, that, that's a very radical position for our government to be taking, and, and the reason it's taking that position is there's money to be made. Well, the changes that have been made over the last several budgets uh, to the Fisheries Act and, and the Canadian Environmental Assessment Act and now the Navigable Waters Act is, is purely changes to, to benefit the shipment of bitumen and, and the tar sands. Here's where Line 9 comes above the ground, right here. There's Line 9. Enbridge says in its press releases that Line 9 doesn't come above the ground anywhere near a community. See there where it says line 9, section 5? Mm -hmm. That's line 9. I would rather like all those oil companies get off our land because it's not rightfully theirs. And I would rather that we would start making 
creating jobs to create to clean up what's been done to our land. Lobbyists argue that oil from Alberta is somehow more ethical despite the global environmental impact of the tar sands on climate change, health effects for people living and working near the tar sands, and the devastating spill record for the Enbridge pipelines. They also argue that the pipelines will bring jobs to Ontario. I think once upon a time um, in the trade union movement there was a, uh, a conflict, either there was going to be jobs or the environment, and I think that has to change and I see it changing. I don't think there's any doubt if you look about the policies of the, uh, the government in Canada that uh, they're, they're not looking at the needs of people, they're not looking at the needs of the environment. We see that in the tar sands, we see that in Line 9. The government is putting something like $1.3 billion into subsidies for the oil and gas industries. And we feel if that money was put into uh, other uh, sustainable uh, energy uh, to uh, energy efficiency, to uh, public transit, this would be a, uh, a better use of the dollars, it would create many, many more jobs, and it wouldn't be environmentally devastating. You're not going to win the war if you don't win the battle. And the battle is Line 9, the battle is Northern Gateway, the battle is XL. The big picture is spills, contamination, treaty violations, and expanding the tar sands. The even bigger picture is climate change. With so much at risk, we need to work together to stop Enbridge Line 9. Change is possible. So are we going to facilitate and be a conduit for tar sands uh, expansion and, and exploitation? Or are we going to say, let's move towards a renewable future? In, in the most basic way, we're humans. And not, we would not exist if it not be for this land. And it's easy to forget that. We're asking you to be reminded that you are tied to this land as well. You cannot exist, all of us cannot exist without this land. And you need, our, the non-native population needs to realize this before it's too late. Because as they say, like it's not until, you know, the last river dries up and that we can't, um, until the land is destroyed that we realize that we can't eat money. I just feel it gets taken away so much from our people. It's teaching us horrible things like that. Greed is something okay because it's shown all around us. Abuse is okay, like abuse to the land is okay, which it's not. And all our teachings are against that. Hopefully together with all of us being awakened to this reality, we can start really um, pushing forward um, this new idea which is a very old idea, really, of, of our relationship to the land and our way of protecting the future. For me personally, the death of our land is the death of our people.